When you hear the word Davos, you immediately remember the World Economic Forum, the international organization that brings together business, political, economic and academic leaders of the world to work towards improving the global state of things. Taking a step away from the approximately 260 sessions that were held during the 5-day annual meeting, let's take a look at all the activities that took place on the sidelines. With temperatures staying decidedly below freezing, the snow came down in droves. The snowfall brings with it a chance to hone your driving on ice skills. Every year, Audi organizes a driving challenge at the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum at Davos. Delegates are invited to try their hand at battling the ice-laden roads in sparkling Audi a 8 and Audi Q5 hybrids. The experience to drive a car here on ice is the most important one which you can get in your life because you see how the physics of a car perform on an underground which is really icy and harsh. So uh, I think I could only recommend to everybody, if you have an opportunity to do that, please join that rally, it's amazing. The ice driving experience is an integral part of, by now forms an integral part of a whole WHOS experience for everyone. I think we have a lot of session, political discussion, meet and greet, but you see a lot of the business as well as the political leaders, they sometimes take a precious half an hour, one hour out of their schedule and want to do something different. I think there the Audi ice driving experience is a very important part. Well, for the dynamic drive, as we see in the background, we have the A8 um, with a Quattro drive. We have the Q5 hybrid. We have behind the terminal for individual test drive, we have the R8 Spider. We have the S6, we have the S7, we have the A2 Static, we have the A3 e-tron. So a lot of cars which people can test here at their convenience. And you'll be surprised whoever, who takes uh, time out of his busy schedule to come by and have an Audi experience. A specially prepared ice track serves as battleground. But before gunning some engines, the delegates are briefed by the driving instructors. Driving on ice is markedly different from driving on normal roads, especially since steering and stopping on ice takes up more than twice the normal distance. Having gotten a better idea about the nuances of driving on ice, the participants get into the Audi A8 and Q5 hybrids and get cracking on the ice track. A lot of slips and some slides later, the participants begin to get a feel of driving on ice. But the star of the ice drive was definitely the Audi Q5 hybrid. which has a multi-award winning 2.0-litre TFSI petrol engine with a 33 kilowatt electric motor powered by a high-performance lithium-ion battery. I've been coming to Davos for many years, but this is the first time I'm trying out this uh, ice driving experience. It's, it's very interesting and uh, well, the car handles beautifully. This one of course is a hybrid, so when you take off you don't even don't even know because there's no sound of the engine you're on battery I'm sure hybrids will find success in India as well but uh, I think it's still still a long way off we, we just have a, a, so, a couple of them yep. off you go just have a couple of couple of them right now but I'm sure uh, numbers uh, number of models will grow number of cars will grow so with uh, Two wheelers. I think it's a brilliant idea, both because it's fun and it's uh, it's a learning experience. It's fun because you don't get to do this all the time, and, and in any case, you don't have too much ice in India, so so it's it's good fun. And also, it's it's a uh, it's an educative thing to do. It kind of trains you how to manage uh, in in a different kind of a crisis or an emergency. So I think it's a wonderful initiative. Quite good initiative they have taken. It gives a new exposure. How, especially for us from India. We've never seen the diving on the lake. We are, we'll never get the opportunity to dive on the lake also. It's a quite thrilling. Well, the Audi Hybrid is the most extraordinary car I've ever driven, and I've tried very many. It doesn't feel like a hybrid. It handles like a grown-up sports car. I can't wait to have one. It was fantastic, I have to say. Uh, Dorit's a much better driver than I am, so 
Yeah, I've had it's 30 it. years more experience. <laughs> I think it's a good initiative. If one is going to drive in Europe in the icy conditions, it's good to get to know. And the Audis are four-wheel drive cars. I have an Audi uh, in Bombay. <laughs> I'd love to do the thing because I love driving myself. I own an Audi, okay, and I don't use a driver. I have an A4, okay, and I have my eyes on a TT when I can afford one. Okay, I don't use a driver myself, and uh, just now the time will not permit. But I think it's an interesting. Even if I get an R off, I'm going to try and do the ice drive. Discussing the world economy, braving the freezing cold, and driving on ice. All in the day's work for the participants of Audi's Ice Drive. Coming up after this short break, skiing, shopping, and some socializing at Davos. Welcome back to Davos Diaries. Besides making the scenery look pristine white in this winter wonderland, the snowfall also provides a perfect setting for skiing. There are six main ski areas in Davos, which provide around 320 kilometers of slopes for skiers. Besides having marked ski runs, a number of cross-country ski runs are also available for the adventurous. Every morning, a number of locals and tourists make their way to the ski slopes, slowly heading up on the ski lifts and then zipping down the slopes on their skis, spraying the sidelines with snow. On some of the advanced slopes, one can catch professional skiers showing off their skills. Besides skiing, tobogganing, ice skating, snowboarding and snow treks are other fun activities that are on offer at Davos. Yes, a lot of people have gone skiing, but I've chosen not to since it's my first time and I'm uh, quite excited about it and enjoying all the sessions. But so not during not not during the session, but I, a lot of my friends seem to be taking time off to go skiing. Davos also provides ample opportunity for visitors to indulge in some retail therapy. World-renowned fashion boutiques and designers make their presence felt on the high street. Switzerland is famous for its banks, watches and chocolates and visitors to Davos are provided many opportunities to get their hands on the latter too. Shops selling the best Swiss watches and stores offering the yummiest chocolates are situated in the marketplace at Davos. sun begins to set, it's the end of another day of conferences at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Discussions done, the delegates put on their tuxedos and gowns for an evening of socializing. The who's who of India's corporate and political world hobnobbed with their international counterparts at glittering get-togethers. The food was delicious, the company interesting and the conversations engaging. Coming up, the heads of India's top companies talk about their experience at Davos. Stay tuned.
Welcome to Davos Diaries. The World Economic Forum is an important congregation of decision makers of governments and businesses along with renowned academicians and economists from around the world. Let's hear what the delegates of the World Economic Forum had to say about their experience at Davos. Oh, it's much bigger now. Too, many more people, this will be much smaller. Traffic in Davos is much more and the crowds are much more. It's been more than 20 years uh, in Davos. Uh, you know, earlier times, uh, Davos was a much quieter place. We even had a sports day uh, in, the four, in the four days that we, or five days we were here. But now, clearly, you know, there's a lot more happening, a lot of activities. As you know, it's a mix of events, so you have the regular uh, seminars and sessions and then you have special events to which you're invited and so it's a great opportunity to sort of hear new brilliant thinking from across the world and to meet people who uh, you otherwise might not have had the opportunity to meet. This is my first experience of being here all uh, the five days and I'm having a great time. I've noticed that you know uh, all the sessions that are talking about the theory of capitalism, how the overpaid bankers, the euro and whether Greece will collapse and Italy will not, are gloom and doom. Okay. And um, all those sessions are open and you can get seating all the time. But if you go to the sessions which are talking about art, literature, sciences, engineering, the uplifting stuff, the environment, those sessions are fully packed and that's where I've been going. Well, Davos is always an exhilarating experience for the simple reason that the best minds of the world converge here. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to discuss. The ambiance is uh, exhilarating, uh, that's the least I can say. And I'm delighted at the meetings that I've had so far. I get a sense that the world is determined to get over the present economic crisis and to move towards a more fair and a just world. The mood at Davos was a mix of optimism and pessimism about the global and the Indian economy. Clearly the global economy is under stress. The Eurozone uh, will be an issue. Looks like after hearing Merkel here and other people that they will be able to sort out their problems, but not completely, so there will be a slowdown. But India seems to be doing very well. So in 2012 we started very well. The stock market is up about 15%. The rupee has firmed up again. Uh, uh, about uh, five to seven percent and uh, I think some reform announcements like 100 percent FDI and single brand retail etc have come through so uh, I think it's a very good start to 2012 and I hope the good start uh, continues and uh, the year ends up well for the economy. This time uh, the focus is largely on Europe uh, you know the sovereign debt crisis that's facing Europe and its impact on uh, the European economy and the global economy. So a lot of discussions uh, uh, centering around that. My takeaway from what I've heard so far, uh, I'm not an expert in uh, you know, uh, European affairs, but my takeaway is that uh, collectively uh, a way will be found to uh, channel resources, efforts, policy uh, to pull Europe out of this crisis. Investors worldwide should be bullish about India. You know, the 9% has slowed down to 7% is not the end of the world. In India, the only other thing that I have to add is that we have to be conscious of the fact that it's a competitive market and capital will flow to the highest return and the highest opportunity. So if the Indian government does a few things and cashes in on the fact that people are now coming back to accept India as an acceptable risk, money is coming back, inflation is down, stock market is up, people's confidence is up. Something, the few things that the government needs to do with respect to infrastructure, foreign and direct investment, they need to do something about power. Okay. If some of those things happen, then India is a growth story. If they don't, then India is not. I think there are problems in the world economy, but the recent IMF forecast has said that the global economy will, despite everything, grow at 3.8%, uh, which is not a very, very uh, bad uh, sign. I think there is a problem. But I would not rate it as a crisis of unmanageable proportions. The collective uh, ingenuity of the world leaders will see through the crisis. Uh, I'm hopeful. As far as the Indian economy is concerned, even after revising our growth forecast, we still hope to grow by 6.9% in, in GDP terms in this very year. And over the 12th five-year plan, we hope to be able to grow by 8.5% 
in GDP terms, which I think under the present circumstances is quite a remarkable achievement. I continue to be hopeful and my hope is not based on uh, any flight of fancy, it is based upon facts. There have been some problems within the country. Uh, we have not been able to move as fast as we wanted to, uh, as far as the second generation economic reforms are concerned. But the government at the level of all the senior ministers, including the Honourable Prime Minister, has said that we continue to have faith in our ability to move forward. We will stay the course. The Indian economy has to grow by 8.5 to 9.5 percent during the 12th five-year plan. I think we should clearly view at the long-term macro perspective in India. I agree that at the moment we have a little bit of a negative to skepticism sentiment going on across the globe and I think the euro crisis and some other uh, issues are definitely bothering a lot of people. But I think if you look at the long-term potential, uh, especially the Indian market has for export as well as for, for the domestic demand, the long-term potential is definitely very, very strong. And I think if policy makers give us a business environmental friendly uh, policies, definitely India has a lot of potential, being it on the skill set which is available, being it on the domestic demand which is there, and being it also because of its attractiveness for foreign direct investors to come into India. A lot of discussions going around here at Davos because uh, all people are worried about the situation, not only in Europe, uh, the situation as a whole in a lot of countries and states is difficult because uh, the sovereign debt situation is the same for United States than for China, for emerging markets than for Europe. And it is very difficult to work out in a very short time the right solutions. Driving on ice, skiing, shopping, socializing and discussions at the World Economic Forum. There's something for everyone at Davos. That's all in this edition of Davos Diaries. See you next time. Yeah.